Welcome back. We've been working on building a streaming music service with uh, Phoenix and Elixir. Um, last time we were working on backgrounds and uh, we'll continue working on that in this video. And uh, I think where we left off was with um, making a function to create a new background, ingest the media and get the, the metadata into the database. So let's dive into that. Um, let's see. There we go. Um, so yeah, I think we'll want a function like the create song function, but like a create background function, which will be a little simpler in this case um, because we don't have um, an audio item that that's like sits between the song and the media. In this case, we just have the background will be related directly to the media it's, itself. There won't be a case here where we would return an error message um, on the create song that comes from the MP3 parser we wrote uh, a couple videos ago. Um, but in this case, I think the only situation where the insert would fail, other than like a catastrophic database issue, um, would be if we end up doing some validations on the, the um, attributes that would uh, potentially return a change set with an error set on it. So, um, those should be the only things we could return from here. Um, uh, let's see. So, let's bring in And as you may recall, the, the create media function um, will always return a media or it'll crash, um, but we don't expect it to, to crash in any normal circumstances. Um, if it's not able to create, it'll be just like to return a 500 error um, to the client. So we don't need to do anything special to handle errors from there. Okay, so this uh, will need, what is the correct mind type for a GIF? Image GIF? I mean, that sounds really believable. Oh, mimes. They're not typing though. What if we looked for... Uh, yeah, let's just take a peek over here. Maybe they say, yeah, image GIF. I'll go, we'll go with the internet science page. I feel pretty good about that then. Image GIF, and we'll use the extension that GIF, which, I mean, in a way we really don't need to be using file extensions for the way I picture this working, which is that we'll serve the media files. Um, the, I'm including them for two reasons. One is um, if at some point I were to say, oh, I don't want to serve these myself from one of my own servers, I'd like to have a CDN handle it. Um, some CDNs make it easy to um, pass along the mime type and like they'll work with it. And other ones, like if you want to pre preload them with the file or something, it, it may infer the mime type from the file extension. So you'd want um, an appropriate file extension to the mime type so it can make a good guess. 
Um, and then likewise, um, if I were to serve this off my own infrastructure but not use the metadata from the database, so like if I wanted to just have like some static file servers or something, then the same thing, it would be, it's, it's easier to convey that file type as part of the file name um, rather than have it follow along as true metadata, which is kind of um, been like an ongoing impedance mismatch with HTTP and file systems like since the web's been around. So anyway, better safe than sorry. We'll, we'll keep both of them in there. Oh, and uh, a third reason could bear a second. I lost track. Another reason could be um, just for convenience in development and debugging. Like it might be nice to see like, oh, I'm getting some files that aren't even the right type here, or oh, that must be one of these because I can see from the file name. Uh, oh, yeah, no. So we've got the media ingested from the path that was passed, and then we should uh, build the background. So that's going to be something like this, right? Um, the media association uh, no yeah that kind so that'll that'll check the change set if we end up doing any validation there okay so I know we have the create media function um, let's just check we have a change set function on background we don't so let's build that real quick um, I don't think we did anything fancy on song, but let's take a look to remember. No, that's a very straightforward change set function. function and any validation we do later we'll probably use functions out of change set yeah so I think that settles that and then uh, we didn't use anything else that we would need to make so let's see if it compiles it doesn't uh, oh yeah I should be a little more thoughtful when I'm copy pasta yeah. There we go. That made, made a lot more sense. Um, oh, where did I put those? Uh, let me let me find one of the gifs um, that was submitted, and uh, we'll use that as a test and make sure we're able to ingest it. But I got to go find that uh, media file. I've got some that folks have submitted already, but I don't remember off the top of my head where they're at. I won't make you uh, watch while I fumble around looking for them. All right, I found a GIF file we can test with, so let's see how this works. Backgrounds. And... Um, parameters where the attributes were first, right? Yep. So that's going to be a title artist and Earl. And then the file path. Yeah, I think that's all we need, right? 
Okay, cool. It didn't catch on fire. Let's see what it did. Um, yeah, that looks good. And then um, we got the artist, we got the media ID, title, and the URL. Yeah, those queries look good. The return value looks good. I like it. It's great. Okay, cool. So I think that's going to work for us. And I think that's all we really need for backgrounds right now. So we should be good to commit that. And um, let's see what's next. I think. Let's see if we can create songs and backgrounds and um, we can get the next song and the next, or the, well, the next audio, in fact. Um, oh, and we can create bumpers. So we've got the two, two kinds of audio we're going to have to start with, and we've got the one type of visual element that'll be part of the stream. And yeah, so I think I think the next thing I'll want to do is um, make this into a Phoenix web app. So far, we've only written you know some Elixir with Ecto to do database stuff and handle the the media files. Um, but I think to move, I want to move towards the front end and. Um, build like a full front to back um, thing that we can play with and use um, and see how how it all works. So uh, yeah, we'll move towards the front end and the next good step with that is going to be to bring in Phoenix and make this a web app and um, well, actually I I think I'll probably jump straight to like stubbing out, stubbing out, uh, like a minimal front end and then build the middle that it depends on. So um, we'll kind of jump to the front end and then work through the middle where we have like a very simple um, API to um, provide information about what audio and, and background the front end should be displaying at a given time um, and work it that way. So that said, um, let's commit this stuff that has to do with backgrounds. Uh, so this whole file's new, good. This whole file's new and it's good. I think this was good. We didn't leave anything undone here, right? No, it's just very simple. It was good to do the <clears throat> do the songs and the back bumpers first, I think, because the backgrounds ended up being like a similar thing, but a simpler case of it. So it was very quick to <clears throat> make the two similar uh, and just follow along what we'd already figured out. Migration. Uh, we're not going to check test media and backgrounds, <clears throat> the whole thing. Okay. Um, let's see. We can probably get rid of that. Split, do they call it? Uh, we're done with that. With this now. Um, so we're going to need to update our mix project to bring in dependencies appropriate for Phoenix. I probably should have done my research. I don't remember right off the top of my head what all we might need to bring Phoenix in. And Phoenix development's been moving pretty quick. This is probably a newer version at least by a point release, I'm sure. Um, but maybe 
I'm not 100% sure if I've used 1.5. This, this could have like some new stuff in it, so we'll be going on this adventure together. I don't see any reason to use an older version right now um, for where we're at in this project. Uh, I think we can just dive in with newish stuff, you know, not, not gonna pull it straight from the GitHub, but you know, I think a release version is gonna be fine for us. Okay, so yeah, there's some optional dependencies, and these are some of the things we're gonna to need to bring in. So like, um, JSON is the um, JSON library, and we'll, we'll wanna use that. Um, Phoenix HTML, we'll definitely use. Um, interesting, so there's a new major version release of that. Um, it's going to bring in PubSub plug. We'll bring in <clears throat> uh, Plug Cowboy. Um, I should fix this up okay. Yeah, so we'll bring in all of those optionals because we want to do all that stuff. Um, oh, uh, so Plug Cowboy like hooks Phoenix in with. Um, well, sorry, Phoenix depends on plug for HTTP stuff, and uh, plug in turn depends on Cowboy. I think you can use plug with other web servers, but everybody uses Cowboy, and it's, it's pretty all right. I think, oh man, I had thought I had found a bug in it once, but I think it ended up being a weird, uh, I wasn't, I didn't have the opportunity, didn't have the ambition to track it all the way down into uh, Erlang, but I think it was not a bug in Cowboy. I think it was actually um, some kind of a weird interaction between um, the Erlang networking stuff and the, the platform I was on. So as far as I know, it's pretty solid. Um, okay, so let's just we'll copy to that and then like I said definitely want to bring in do I I think Phoenix needs a JSON parser regardless of whether you use JSON or not I think it uses it for some of its um, baked-in stuff like um, its web socket stuff and um, Oh, the, the new thing, um, live views, of course. I'm sure it uses it for that. So I don't know if we'll be using those things right away. We may use um, some of it as time goes on. But regardless, I think Phoenix itself needs some kind of JSON library, and this is just optional because you, you could use a different one if you wanted. Um, but I don't want... Um, Phoenix HTML will definitely use. That's cool. And um, Plug Cowboy, like I said, we'll use Cowboy. It's it's pretty solid as far as I can tell, and I don't want to mess with using something different. So I think that's enough to get Phoenix working. Um... Let's find out. We're going to have to kill that because we're uh, changing the dependencies. Um, let's get those dependencies. Oh. Uh. Oh, I see. I pulled in the wrong... versions of some of this. Um, okay, well, that's, this one's easy to fix. Oh, that was weird, wasn't it? What do you think that's about? Um, that was Phoenix HTML, right? Yeah. I guess it pays to double check these things. Okay. And then... Um, 
telemetry. Oh, okay. Um, so we can... <sighs> well, I'm at... Um... What, uh, what options do we have under depths here? Uh, depths clean we can do. And then we can unlock telemetry. Let's unlock telemetry. Clean telemetry. Okay, so I think that'll just get rid of the whole shebang. Yep. Now let's let it go. Cool. Uh, looks like it got everything it needed. Let's, uh, let's see if it can build. Um, what is it? Uh, PHX server? Do I remember that right? Well, it's definitely doing something. It's got a lot to build. Um, yeah, so that PHX server mix tasks should bring up the web server and everything, um, which is like a hello world type page. And then we'll go replace that um, with our own thing. Okay, well, we got a couple of warnings. I think that's no big deal. Okay, so we need to... Yeah, and I think we did include JSON 1.0, well, 1.2 even. Um, so we need to add this to our configuration to specify. Uh, no, I would not prefer to use poison. Uh, okay, so let's drop that into our config. Make sure it's happy now. Great. Um, oh, it didn't start up a server. Um, probably need some configuration and stuff for that, don't we? So. Yeah, we'd need to set up an endpoint at least. I don't remember all of the details of that. You know, I think most folks just use the um, generators, but I'm uh, I'm an odd duck. Plus, more fun for the video. Is it more fun for the video to actually see how it all hooks together? <clears throat> We'll go with that rather than I'm an odd duck. I don't think you believe me though, do you? Uh, I just like to see how all the pieces hook together. Helps me understand. Um, mix, mix, uh, what did I want? What was I doing here? You ever go to the fridge and then you don't know why you're in the fridge? Hex docs, that's what I want. Offline Phoenix. Yay, okay. Um, yeah, so I think we need. Right, they don't come out and tell you. 
how to build it from scratch. They're just going to recommend using the generators, which is fine. I think that's perfectly reasonable to recommend. Um, So let's well let's go ahead and commit this because everything still runs and this is genuinely does like do something. Um, okay, um, so that brings in Phoenix. Now, yeah, so I think. I think we've got to build an endpoint, and I think this using Phoenix endpoints is going to do most of the magic, if I remember right. We're going to learn together, but that's my vague uh, recollection. So let's make a folder for the web stuff, and we'll make a file. I might get some of this a little wrong, but if I do, I'll try and fix it up later. If, if, if I do and you notice, please let me know down in the comments. Okay, so this will be our endpoint module. Um, endpoint. You know, I bet we got, we're going to have to do something in the um, application to start this too, aren't we? Seems to me like we are. I might have to run and look that up because that's that's not liable to be like at the very top. Uh, oh, <laughs> uh, it is likely to be right at the top of the documentation. Look, it's right here. Endpoints must be explicitly started as part of your application supervision tree. So, okay, well, we'll make sure to put that in there. I'm not gonna have to go look up much, am I? Not for that. Um, so I think they mean that, um, we'll definitely have more plugs than this, um, cause there's important stuff and I don't remember what all of it is right now. Um, but I know we for sure need a router. So we'll have to make a router module too. And so the endpoint is kind of like all HTTP requests are going to come through this module. And this module defines like the stack of plugs that they're going to progress through to produce a response. Um, but not all the plugs have to be in here. Like there's other places you can bring plugs in and like a controller. Um, you can build a stack of plugs in the router too and apply different stacks to different um, paths. Um, but this this is plugs that are going to touch everything. So a plug is like um, between, so like when the request comes into Cowboy, Cowboy is the web server, and request is going to, this is just my understanding of this, like don't, you want to know for sure, go read the documentation and maybe, maybe read the code too, because I don't think everything's always in the documentation, all the little details, you know. Um, so the Cowboys are web server. And so you're going to have that. I think that that, does that build the request map? It might. If not, plug does. Uh, I know plug adds a bunch to it if it's not the one building it, but I, I want to say cowboy builds it and then plug adds stuff to it. And then plug is going to um, pass that request through each plug that's defined, and then plug can, you know, like add more stuff to the stack. But at some point, um, you're going to do something to that. Um, either run out of plugs and pass, you know, a, um, they call it a con, a plug.con is um, the type of struct that you'll pass back. And uh, at some point, either you're going to, like, send a response or something's going to happen to tell plug, like, 
okay, this, we're done building a response on this. It's time to send it and it'll skip the remainder of the plugs or it'll run out of plugs, right? So that's similar to, um, man, so I, I know I've seen that in the Node.js world. That's, um, huh. It eludes me now the name of it. I know I've used it though. There's some, it's, just, it's a common pattern um, for building web apps uh, nowadays. It seems like um, whoever did it first really hit onto something. Um, also in the Ruby world with uh, Rack, I think. I haven't done a lot of Ruby, some, but not a lot. That was a long time ago. And um, seen something similar in the Java world too. Uh, does uh, what's that called? I'm trying to remember if this is like some old EJB stuff I saw or the newer uh... wow man it's on the tip of my tongue we used it a bunch um, spring, spring of a thing. Does spring do something like this? If it does, we never used it much. Um, we always wrote pretty straightforward stuff. Spring, spring is like, spring does a lot for you. So if you don't touch something, uh, you don't need to know about it kind of thing, except when things go wrong, you need to know about all of it. So it's kind of a, all abstractions are leaky, right? Anyway, enough about all that. Let's we let's sling some code. So uh, I think okay, we better update our application to get this started, right? So we got the repo repo going. Web endpoint. I think we got to get that going. Is there anything we have to do on the endpoint configuration? Hmm. Yeah, I think we probably do need to set like that secret key base, right? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what it does if we don't do anything. Like what's the... Oh. <laughs> what if I did the thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, at the very least, we're going to need that, aren't we? So I think it's kind of a minimal router. Oh, yeah, we got to click on this before menus work for some reason. Kind of weird, huh? Router. Um, I mean, I just assumed, so that's interesting is, are they kind of recommending that, yeah, I don't know, I'm going to use the web. I don't think it is going to hurt me either way, but like that makes more sense to me to have that be in the low fi level web. Um, namespace, right? I don't know. Makes sense to me anyway, so can we just leave that empty? Mm -hmm. Boy, that's not, um, no configuration found for OTP app lo -fi limo and module lo -fi limo web dot endpoint. Oh, okay. Um, 
Okay, so we just need to make that configuration. It really, it really is going to insist on that. And I assume we at least need to set the secret key base. Um, which means I probably want to split this config at this point. Do I? Nah, probably not at this point, but soon, because we're going to want, like, when we make a prod environment, like, we're going to want the config to pull in, like, things like the secret key base from, um, an environment variable, right? We don't want to check that into our repo. But for dev and test, something like that would be fine. Um, so I guess it found the endpoint because we used phoenix.endpoint, so it knew the name of that module. But now it's looking for all of the configuration that it doesn't have. Uh, so let's put an empty configuration. My guess is it's gonna... Yeah, gee. Um... Does it come out right out? Does it? Does it? Am I just missing it? I feel like it's not quite telling us everything, it, like minimal that it would need here. Yeah. Mm. Let me um, let me let me dig into this a little and see what it needs to resolve this, and then. Um, I'll be right back. I think it's actually, uh, is it really a bug? Like, I think it's going to run okay, but it's, I think it's right here in um, Phoenix uh, router helpers. Yeah, Phoenix router helpers. Um, is this the, uh, yeah, code. So I think it's injecting this function into my router module. And uh, this clause is when the endpoint is an atom. So I'm guessing then the endpoint variable here is the atom that's the module name of, of my endpoint module. Um, <clears throat> and so where they say dot static URL here uh, implies map access because there's no parentheses. Um, but here, uh, I mean, you can see that, that they think that they are calling a function. Um, which it will, I think, correctly disambiguate that. Um, but the, the current best practice, I believe, is to put a set of empty parents there so it knows it's function access rather than um, having to try and disambiguate it at runtime, right? So I think this is actually a compiler warning caused by a dependency. Um, Gross, right? With that said, I think it's going to run fine. Um, and indeed, oh, oh. That's 
creepy. Is somebody squatting on that? Man, it says, is that right on 48? Yeah, I wouldn't have thought so. Well, it's not there either. Um, looks like we get to configure that at least. Okay. Uh, so, that's not going to be an empty list, is it? We're at least going to want to configure... Uh, yeah, I think we want to configure the defaults to false. Does that just like turn it off or? Um, well, let's set it up. Um, So, port, let's put it on port 4000 for now. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that's enough to get us going. Um, it kind of looks like it. Okay, cool. So the web server is up and running. Um, it has like none of the things it needs to be able to serve web. So yeah, it can't even do uh, 404. That's wild. So yeah, no air view, none of those things. Uh, so maybe we should make that. Um, You know, for development, I would ideally like, there's like a, a built-in air view thing. <sighs> Custom air pages, no, action fallback. Yeah, I should look into that. There's a nice way to, in dev at least, have it show like a stack trace and everything, which is nice. Um, let me go look up how to do that and see, maybe we can do that next and um, try and think if there's any other like helpful development infrastructure we should give ourselves, or maybe I'll just think of it as we go along. But uh, I'd, I'd like to at least have that. A blank page isn't real helpful to have come back when things can't work, so let me go look that up. I think I found what I need. Let's see if I'm right. Um, so we need a couple of things. One is we, we, I think we do need an air view module. And um, I don't think it needs to be real sophisticated until we want custom air pages, which we will want eventually, but certainly for development, um, we don't need them. So let's... Um, Oh, right. So I think, I think that views go in a folder called views. I think that's where we want to put that. I'll fix it if it's wrong. Air view. Okay, so let's kind of oh. yeah, don't just copy everything okay um oh yeah we're gonna want to build out a um, A module that's gonna yeah so the usual like there's some includes it includes um, uses imports and aliases that you kind of want like in every view module or every um, controller or um, 
things like that. And so the convention or the, the, the usual way is to make um, a module you can include or use, sorry, that you can use, um, which will um, have the using, using macro implemented. Um, to, to bring in like all of that and and so that way if you say oh all of my views should be able to do this Then you can just do it in one place and not have to poke through all of them or try and remember and forget like the thing you should have put in to this one view so Yeah, we we'll want to build that out too At least a little and um, Okay, but for this what we need is this function, uh, which you can have on any view. The error view is special. Phoenix looks for that when it wants to display an error page. So the name and everything on this is special, but um, this uh, template not found is for when there's not a template for the specific, so it'll look for like a, a template called 404, 500, 400, whatever. And um, this is kind of a fallback. If you haven't implemented all of those, then this will produce kind of a crummy um, rendering of the um, status message based on which template uh, Phoenix is looking for. So it'll give you like a generic 500 error page or whatever. So the other piece of that puzzle is uh, we want to set this debug errors configuration on the endpoint and then that um, is going to dip in and give us an even better page. But let's get this working first and then we'll make the nicer thing for development. Um, but even in production and even if we hadn't built a custom error page to handle the um, particular status code that was going back, we, we don't want to just send an empty page. We want to send something that, that tells like some kind of thread to pull on to fix it, you know? And so the user knows too, like this, this something happened, right? Something that they could tell um, someone like, this is what it said, you know? So, uh, yeah, so we'll need also um, uh, Well, I guess it's just that And um, Wow, I'm gonna have to dig deep on this one. I don't write these all the time. But I think it's gotta be, is, this, is use a special form? It's not, okay. It's not a guard. There it is. Um, so this probably tells us, yeah, the using macro. So that's what I had hoped. Um, so that's gonna be something like, now, I think I wanna make a separate using macro for each type, because remember, is we passed an option, and that option um, typically is just an atom that tells like what kind of module you're building. So in this case, a view. So I think, and I don't, I think the generator does it differently, but I, I think this is how I want to do it. So let's do it this way. If you know a good reason not to do it this way, let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, I'm just gonna forge ahead. Oh, and this is a macro. So this runs at compile time. Um, yeah. Um, and so that's 
the structure of it. Now, what should we put in there? Uh, so this doesn't really give us a lot of thoughts about that, but I think if we go to the documentation for view, it's going to give us some ideas what we want to bring in. Oh, look, right. Oh, yeah, so this is, they have like, a, the generator makes like a using, and then I think it's got like a case in it or something that switches out to these separate functions. I'm sure there's a good reason, but... Uh, yeah, and then we gotta tell where the templates are gonna be, um, which will be templates. Uh, namespace, what's that do? Is that new? Did I sleep? Have I slept? Uh, let's come back to that. Yeah, those all seem like good things to bring in. I'm not gonna go crazy yet. I know we want Phoenix HTML. I, I do know we were gonna want to get Flash. View module. Yeah, you, sometimes you use that, but let's just make sure we have the You know, let's not bring in anything till we know we actually want it. Um, I, I do know actually that we want um, Phoenix HTML. And we'll probably make an error helpers later. Um, and I do want that alias, that's super handy. Something I want. So what is this business with a namespace? The namespace to consider when calculating view paths. Okay. And the namespace is my app. Templates are expected to be at root user. On the other hand, if the view is my app admin user view. Yeah, familiar with that. For explicit root path, root path locations, the path can be provided. Yeah, which we did. The root and path, yes. Yeah. Defaults to underscore view module name. Sure. But how does it use namespace? It doesn't say, it just says it uses it. Defaults to the first nesting in the module name. Oh, okay. Um, defaults to the first nesting. So they mean like, if it was like lo-fi limo web admin. Oh, have the namespace my app. Frankly, I don't understand what they're trying to tell me here. I think we're good. Um, we're gonna learn. Man, the, it seems like this is conventional too, but it says it's required, so we better put it in. I, thought that was just by convention, but it must be actually set right here. Um, I don't, we didn't change any configuration yet, so let's just, that still doesn't work. 
Oh, we should recompile though. Yeah. Great. Okay, so that generated the default. We don't get errors pouring out over here. Um, that's great. So that's worth checking in. Um, yeah, that's probably its own thing, really. Um, let's do get that out of here, I think. Regret that. Uh, oh, I already do. Uh, so this should probably go with that too. And that. And the router. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should have committed on Maybe. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, that I'll make separate. So, don't overthink this. So, I gotta learn how to amend a commit in here. <clears throat> Make sure that's how I think it is. It is. Let's say we stubbed out the endpoint, and that's all part of that, right? All right. <clears throat> Happier with that. Excuse me. I'm gonna <clears throat> clear my throat here. Sorry about that. I was uh, was doing a little metal working over the weekend and. I always wear a respirator when I'm grinding or cutting or painting or welding, but <clears throat> maybe I picked up a little something anyway on my way in and out of the, the shop. So this is all about um, the air view. Yeah, stub that out. <clears throat> More or less. Okay. So that's working better. Now, um, I want to bring in that <clears throat> debug errors. I think that's going to make our lives better if that's what I remember it being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I want. So this is one of the to, to me, this is one of the cool things about Phoenix. Set aside all of the, like, what a good fit, like, functional programming is for a web app and things like that, but, like, did they include something like this where you get a stack trace right there and you can actually, like, click through it? And the fact that that's baked in and, you know, I mean, everything's harder than it looks, but I don't think that they thought this was like a crazy undertaking to include this, to just be like, oh yeah, we should have that, you know? <clears throat> kind of like, um, kind of like what we did in the MP3, was it the MP3 module? Yeah, where we threw in some nice debugging stuff and it's like, well, you can, and it's not super hard to include that. And so you do because you're going to appreciate having it later, you know? It just takes a minute or two. Whereas if this were a language or if this were a library or something you were using that made it hard to kind of do the right thing, then you wouldn't want to do it. And you're going to say, well, that's too far away from, you know, the task at hand and we'll, we'll have to, you know, build that bridge if we ever need it. But um, when, it's, <clears throat> when your tools make it easy to do the right thing, then everything becomes a joy. Okay. Um, I guess we better, better commit that change. Um, debug errors. Configuration. 
configure configure error debugging. <sighs> if I was working on this project with other humans, I would probably put a lot more into my commit messages. I would venture that there would be fewer of them too, because I don't know, it really depends on the culture of the team you're working with, but I've definitely, especially places that use like um, Garrett, Garrett, um, or some other code review tools, like there's a, definitely a push to not make like a lot of small commits, right? Whereas when I'm working by myself, um, especially, I'm very eager to commit anything that could be considered like done, you know, that, that way I have like the least amount of stuff in flight. <clears throat> so I often look at that, just look at the get status to see like, what was I working on when I go away and come back? And um, if something I was done with is not checked in, then I'll waste time looking at it again and saying like, well, what was I still trying to do with this? Or why is this not um, disposed of, you know? So what do we want to do next? I think next we should make, how, how long is this video now at this point? Um, I have not got a good way to see that. We gotta be coming up on an hour. Uh, anyway, I need a break, so that's a good enough reason to cut it off. Um, so, I think what I wanna do next is actually make a route and a template and a controller for the main page of the web app, which will be the main page of the site, um, which will be the player. So that's gonna be like, when you come to the website, boom, you're streaming. Like that's that's how I want that to work. I, you shouldn't have to sign up or click through some nonsense or whatever, like you should get there. You're gonna have to click a button, of course, because you um, autoplay, autoplaying audio is not cool. Um, and also <clears throat> the browser makers know that, and so they just won't let you do it. But yeah, you should come, the background should start hopping. Um, you should see like the metadata for what's playing and everything, and you should be able to hit a play button to get going on it. So I think that's what we'll work on next time is starting to build that page. Um, and some of those things I've prototyped before and worked with folks on like, you know, how should it work? And I have already pretty specific ideas. And then other pieces of it um, we'll be figuring out as we go. So that might be interesting. Um, kind of it was a similar mix to what we've done so far. Like some of this stuff I've already known, like how the shuffle should work and things like that. Um, and then other pieces of like, how should it be structured or um, what particular metadata will we need in every case I haven't been as sure about, so we've just kind of figured it out. And we'll no doubt have to go back and revisit some of that, um, either as we find like things don't mesh together or um, as I get additional feedback from the folks who have been testing this for me. Um, <clears throat> well, and maybe from you, because um, of course you can, you can go to lofi.limo and see what's out there now. Of course, the videos are gonna be lagging behind what's live on the site. Um, in fact, as of this video, as of filming this video, what's live on the site is actually an older prototype. And um, so once we get enough put together here, um, then I'll roll that live and you'll actually be seeing the code that we're building today running live. But yeah, there's necessarily a lag between um, when I can get a video out and um, when I'll ship the code. I'll ship the code as quick as I can because um, I'm eager to get feedback from the folks I'm working with. So, um, yeah, so I think that wraps it up for this video. Um, I'm going to take a little break and I think I'll be able to do another video today. And um, 
yeah, we'll get into that part of it. So till then, uh, take care and uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs>